Hello, I heard that you are trying to lose weight. I heard that you have tried every single diet, every single exercise, and you are doing everything right, but the weight is not going. And when it goes, it comes back next week. How is this possible? I will show you in this video how I lost the weight without trying. And why do I say without trying? Because I had every single ED possible. Any ED you can imagine, I had it, okay? That's how much I was trying to lose weight and then gain it and lose and gain it. And it was a whole vicious cycle. Learn from my mistakes and learn from what I have learned. Hi guys, my name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. Okay, let's get right into it. First things first, if you are trying to lose the weight that you are literally unable to lose no matter what, work on healing your traumas, work on healing your soul and wait before you get like, oh my God, there she goes again about trauma, blah, blah. The reason why we are the way we are as adult all stems from childhood. Whatever has happened in your childhood will affect you later in life. Even the small traumas where you think like, oh my God, no, that didn't affect me. Your body keeps the score. Your body remembers everything that happened. So right now your, your stomach is constantly bloated. Might be trauma stuck in your stomach that needs to be released. How do you release that trauma? You can do soul healings. You, you find a soul healer, just look up soul healings, whatever. You find someone that can work on your soul and literally release the trauma. They can do hypnotherapy with you, reliving the trauma and then releasing it. You can journal about it and just acknowledge what happened. By acknowledging what happened and trying to work on healing it and breaking the toxic patterns that you have right now, that is a way of healing the trauma. And I know that you're thinking, oh my gosh, shut up about trauma already, get to the next point, whatever, I'm gonna ignore this. You can do that. You can absolutely do that. And you can try to go on with your life. I do not care. Okay. But honestly, for me, trauma healing changed my body, my digestion and my physical appearance. What it did for me inside is remarkable. Like that is even insane. But the physical is even more insane. Like every day when I look in the mirror, I'm like, whoa, I look really good. And why? It's because when you heal the soul, it will reflect outside. Your physical appearance will change when you heal the inside. Another thing is focus on being healthy and not skinny. See, with my ED, the constant was like, oh, I just, I want to be skinny. I want to be skinny, right? But then I would get to skinny and I hated it. Like it looked so ugly. It didn't look normal to me. So then I was like, you know, it's not working for me. Like, what do I actually want? And what I actually wanted was to look toned and nice and healthy. And not like I was actually like about to leave this earth. Another thing is throw away your scale. I do not know when I have last weighed myself just out of myself other than medical appointments. I don't weigh myself. I just look in the mirror and if I like what I see, that's it. Scale can be so toxic for you because you might think like, oh my God, I'm on this weight loss journey, whatever. And then one day you're this weight and the next day you see that the weight is up. But that can be water weight, that can be bloating, that can be something else. But you in your head, you're like, oh my God, like why did this happen? Relax, relax, okay? Throw away that scale. That scale is not what you should be looking at. You should be looking in the mirror and if you like what you see, that's enough. You don't need to know how much you weigh because it can get very toxic. Another thing is start weight training or uh, Pilates. So Pilates is actually, they work on your skinny muscles so i have noticed that a lot of women that start doing pilates they're actually much happier with their body and they say they lean out much faster than they would do with weight training because also for a lot of women we're very hormonal weight training doesn't work that well on our hormones and our body can even bloat out because of it so for example when i was weight training three times a week I had a lot of bloating throughout the week, but then when I cut down to only two times a week and having like, for example, it's Monday and Friday, having some time between it, I was always leaned out. So don't overdo things either. Don't think, oh my God, I need to be every day at the gym. Oh my God, I'm really every day weight training. No, like don't overdo it. You can stress out your body. And as well, when you create muscle on your body, your muscle automatically burns calories. So now I have little abs, I did some even back muscles, I worked on my butt. So these muscles keep me fit. Like whatever happens, even if I eat unhealthy a day or not, 
my bustle, bustle, my muscles automatically burn off the calories. People, the mistake they make is they only do cardio and then they become skinny fat. So then they're skinny, but they are just like flobby, you know? So try to get really toned so it's all in place. And even if you're like a little bigger, but you're toned, very nice looking. It's like, I just think toned on every body type is very nice looking. Another thing is walking five to 10,000 steps a day. If you want to walk more, that's up to you. I have noticed the the less I try to force myself, because I used to be like, oh my God, I need to walk 10,000 steps a day. But then I would also constantly be hungry because again, I'm putting expectations on myself. No, like now I'm just like, okay, sometimes I walk like 4,000 steps, 3,000, you know, like I don't walk a lot, but still my body is just rested. Because a lot of times we overstress our body with all these like, oh, you have to do this. You have to go to the gym every day, all these things. And then your body is just bloated because it cannot handle the extra stress. We have stress all day in our head. Imagine you're stressing out your body physically as well. Another thing is I drink two to three liters of water a day. I just do this because this works for me. A lot of people, they cannot handle three liters. So don't drink it because you think like, oh my God, Liz does it, you know? It's all depending on your body. Some people are enough with one liter, one and a half liter. The reason why I drink uh, two to three liters is because it helps with my digestion. Like for example, yesterday I had like constipation and stuff. And then I was like, you know what? Throughout the day, I'm just gonna drink three liters, which was even a lot because I haven't done that also in a while. Uh, I drink three liters and then the next day, guess what? My digestion was fast again. Because like you have to think about it as flushing a toilet. Like what if you're flushing, but there's no water coming down? Like it will not flush, okay? So you need water to make it flush. Another thing is work on lymphatic drainage. Now, what is the lymphatic system? The lymphatic system is a part of the immune system. It basically helps defend your body against infections and it keeps your bodily fluids in balance. We all have like lymph nodes in the back of our neck. Try this, if you're bloated, if you have eaten pizza, whatever, whatever will bloat you, and the next day, wake up, feel here. Right here, you will have nodes, lymph nodes that are very, very swollen. So that then means that your lymphatic system is not working well. So what you can do then is either get a lymphatic massage. You can look up on YouTube how to do a lymphatic massage. You can do it for your face. You can do it for your body. You can get a lymphatic massage done. Also with dry brushing, that's how you make the lymphatic uh, system move better. Also with LPG, this is like a machine. They use this in salons. It's like a suction machine and they go all over your body to release like any toxins from the lymphatic system. And after that, like the massage, all these things you will notice, you have to go to the toilet to pee a lot because the waterly fluids are coming out. Like any toxins that you have in your body are coming out. You are bloated, your lymphatic system is not working well. If you have a lot of cellulite, your lymphatic system is not working well. If your digestion is not good, your lymphatic system is not working well. Even drinking a lot of water that also helps with the lymphatic system, that's, that's what naturally happens. Then you will see also a difference in your appearance. You'll be less puffy, your face will go snatched. Another thing was I was eating what I want, when I want, okay? I was so tired of like, oh, you have to eat three times a day, you have to do this, or you can't eat this, you can't eat that. That's like, it might all be true, but for me, it was again, restrictions and what I can and cannot do. So I started to live freely. I was like, listen, Liz, the only uh, task you have is you have to eat every day. Some days I'm not that hungry, so I don't eat three meals a day. I might eat one or two meals and then have some snack, and that's it. Some days I'm more hungry and then, and then I do eat three meals, but rarely do I hold myself to a schedule anymore because it just doesn't work for me. I cannot live with restrictions on myself or what I'm supposed to do. And I think a lot of people as well, they just, for example, they wake up in the morning, they don't feel like eating in the morning. This is very normal. I don't think you should force food down your throat because this is how it's supposed to do, be. So focus on eating uh, fats, protein, and fiber. That has also got my digestion working again. So I will eat like an avocado toast with a lot of avocado, and that keeps me full for a very long time. Or I will eat like pasta. Listen, if I have to eat like, let's say unhealthy, I would prefer to eat pasta over pizza because pizza is very heavy on my body and I feel like it's harder for my body to digest. 
but when I eat like a pasta, it feels more lighter. The more you incorporate protein into your food, like fish, chicken, or vegan protein, you will feel less hungry throughout the day. Like if you're eating a lot of carbs and if you start out your day even with carbs or sugar, you will be more hungry throughout the day. But what I also do is like, I do eat breakfast now because it, do, it does help a lot with my uh, digestion. And when I eat breakfast, I make sure it's always a salty breakfast or like an avocado toast, things like that. Because if I choose to eat something sugary, then the whole day I'm craving more food or I'm craving more carbs. And why is it? Because your glucose can spike very high from that sugar. Another thing is my supplements and vitamins. So for example, glutathione. I think glutathione is very good for the detoxification of your liver. It also helps with digestion. Vitamin C. Vitamin C helps to fight anything in the immune system. It makes your immune system stronger and your face also brighter. Omega-369. This is uh, fish oil and it literally helps with inflammation like crazy okay every i started taking this i think two or one year ago now and ever since then my inflammation went down massively so vitamin d vitamin d is not good only for the overall body health but also for your hair if you have hair loss you might be lacking in vitamin d and no you don't just get it from the sun like that because we don't absorb that much vitamin d from the sun so taking it as a supplement is very crucial. What you can also take is a supplement called bromelain. Uh, bromelain is what you find inside of pineapple. You know when a lot of girls, they drink like pineapple juice because it helps with swelling. Bromelain is actually the thing in pineapple which helps you. If you take, just take the capsule, that's what reduces swelling and inflammation in the body. You don't have to take these vitamins and stuff daily. What I take daily from them is definitely, definitely omega-369 and uh, vitamin D. The other ones like glutathione and bromelain, I go like on and off. Another thing is getting hobbies and things to do. See, if you're all day just eating and eating and eating, you have no life, okay? You need to find a life. Like why is it that you have so much time to eat constantly? And why is it that when you eat that you cannot stop eating? That is clearly that there's something else you're trying to fill. It's not about the food. If you're having a pizza, then you want a pasta, and then you want something else, sure, it's not normal. This is not how our body is wired. You're craving something else, but you're trying to replace that with sugar and food. But what is the real problem here? That's why I said in the beginning, look at the trauma firsthand. Look at what, what is it that you're really craving. Are you lacking love? Are you lacking self-love? Is that why you're doing it? Do you not care about your life? Because you clearly don't. If you're just doing that constantly, you don't care. If someone that highly values themselves, they don't have to push food down their stomach to a point where they cannot breathe anymore. And I can say this because I used to be like that. I did not value myself. I literally thought that at some point this is going to take my life. I really, I really thought that because it came to a point that it was almost taking my life and I did not care why I did not value my life. I did not value my health. And that's where it was all stemming from. I did not value myself. That's why I could not stop eating. I just would push everything down and then purge as well. Try to find hobbies and try to find uh, passions that you are passionate about, that you love, that in the morning you cannot wait to get up and, and work on that. Try to work on yourself on a deeper level. Understand that we're more than just a physical body. Try to work on your wisdom. Try to, try to expand yourself. You're not limited to only being skinny or being big and that's it, you know. When you understand that there's much more to life and that you have much more to give in this life, you will not have that focus so much on, oh, I need to be skinny, oh, I need to diet, no. Because you understand your greater mission and you understand what you're here to do. And that's why you have to ask yourself, what am I here to do? What legacy do I want to leave? Is that the legacy I want to leave? Just trying my whole life to be skinny? No. Also, don't eat food with fear attached to them. See, what I used to do when I was younger, I was like, oh my God, I had this restriction of I can't eat sugar, right? Or I can't eat carbs, I can't eat pasta because I'll get fat. That's what I thought. But now I eat all of these things and I eat them with no fear. I just eat them because I want to eat them and that's it. 
But before, when I had the fear attached to those foods and I used to eat them, it would blow to me. I would become more chubbier because of it. And why is that? It's because you're eating that food with an energetic attachment of fear and fear is a big manifester. When you're scared of something, that thing is most likely to come into your life. So if you're scared that that thing, that that food is gonna, let's say, make you big, it probably will. You just have to eat food as in like, oh, okay, I'm just eating food because I'm gonna eat food. I need to nourish this vessel that I have. This body is such a blessing that we have, like even being able to walk outside, some people cannot do that, you know, or even be able to see, some people cannot do that your organs, the, the way they're every single day working for you, how smart this body of ours is. Have respect for your body, have respect for yourself. Don't disrespect yourself by eating all the food you can and then like um, going on a diet and then eating again. It's a, it's a form of disrespect for yourself. You're worth much more than that and you have much more self-control than you think. Honey, we know there is a void you're trying to fill and we need to find what is the cause of that void in order to heal all the rest. See, you can follow all the steps that I just said, but if you don't heal that void, like what are you missing? What are you missing that you want to put all of that inside of you to fill something? What is it? Also, reduce your stress. When stress is high in the body, you're more likely to gain stomach fat. How do we reduce stress? Write your day down before you go to bed. Write it down so it's out of your mind, so you're not stressed about it. Realize that nothing is gonna destroy you. You're in control of your life and anything you want or anything that is for your highest good will happen. Don't worry about it. Let's look at solutions instead of problems. Other thing is through meditation. Just five minutes even sitting down, meditating, calming your body down, realizing we're here on earth, realizing this blessing that we have, realizing this beautiful body that we have, that will also calm you down. Another thing is yoga. Yoga immensely helped me with my stress. Every time I do yoga, I come out literally like a butterfly, like so zen. Do these things in order to keep your stress levels low and have proper sleep. Sleep is very important, guys. Like that's why throughout the day, you need to do some exercising or anything that tires you out a little so that when you go to sleep, you can sleep very well. There's also supplements if you're unable to sleep that you can take but I don't like relying on supplements. I like uh, for my body to work on itself. So really try to sleep properly. I notice when I don't sleep well that I'm bloated. It's the only way the body heals is through sleep. When you take that away, it's not able to recover that well. So prioritize your sleep. Do not go to sleep at 3, 4 a.m. It's really destroying your bodily function. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, I really enjoyed making this video. And yeah, I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.